Hello, Hello, my friends are Sims. Hello, today I'm going to be looking at the oscillographic block module. This is an old chiptune module based on some chip called the SN76489 chip. Very catchy name. Anyway, what I wanted to do with it is I've had this for years. It was one of the first big modules that I got, um, but it's really complicated to use, and for that reason, I've kind of yeah, let it fall by the wayside a wee bit. There's also a bunch of kind of quirks and issues with it. The company that made it are no longer in production, I believe, or at least this module isn't in production anymore. And if you email them, you don't get a reply. So the manual disappeared for years and all that stuff. So it's a bit of a strange module, but it is really powerful and it makes some really cool sounds. So my plan is to try and rediscover it a bit and write like a basic tune. There's a bunch of what are called presets on this and the presets can play one shot sounds, sequences or whatever else. And uh, I'm not gonna explain all the modulation options because it's a bit weird and will take up way too much time. But basically each bank here can contain a sequence with uh, one voice, two voices or two voices and noise or one voice and noise, I guess, or just noise. Basically it's good three voices, two of which are melodic and one is noise. Um, you can trigger these, so you can use it as like drum effects or you can, uh, you know, I don't know, trigger different sequences. So I'm going to go down the sequence route because I've already got some sequences in here that I wrote when I was first trying out the module, just experimenting with it. And rather than sit and program new sequences in because it takes a wee bit of time. I'm just going to use one of the ones that's in there that I quite like that I never did in with and then I'm going to um, uh, try and make it into a tune. So I've got it plugged in. You can't see it but it's plugged into an output module up here so I'll turn it up and you'll hear the sequence. <laughs> Uh, whatever you get the idea but basically I've copied that sequence onto these different pads here or these different sections so that first sequence uh, runs off its own internal clock whereas these ones uh, should run clocked to uh, an external clock so you basically trigger the sequence via this thing so that's what I'm going to try Ooh, what it sounds like I'm not going to explain every part of the process that I'm doing because that would take forever. But I wanted to explain this particularly because this is a weird module. So I have my sequences set up. I've copied the sequence that is clocked to an external clock onto these patterns or these banks. So if I plug this in, you'll hear. Nice. And I'm going to make this one this is the clock speed of the chip, so you can either have it higher or half, or sorry, standard or half. So I'm going to have this one at standard, and then this one is at half speed, so I'll get an octave down, basically. I think it's an octave anyway. So what I'm going to do is run this through a bit crusher, which is the, the A189 from Dopefire. So if I come over here, this is the output of the oscillographic block. I'm going to put it into this um, dope for module. And I know I've got a blank panel, blank space there, but tough shit. I'm going to need a filter here, which is the dope for 106-5 SEM. Finally, this thing is a pre-module, so it's a preamp module based on old Mackie, oh no sorry, old Boss KM60 mixers and it kind of saturates things a bit. It's from feedback modules, it's very cool. Bit crusher, bit modifier, whatever it's called from Dopefire. And you can hear how cool it sounds and that's the sound I'm going to use is the basis of this, whatever I'm doing. In terms of clock, what I'm going to do is just now, just for the sake of this, I've got a clock coming from my trigger right here but I'm going to clock the whole thing from the RM multi-clock down here, which is running, uh, and it's going to go into the endorphin shuttle control, and it's going to spit out a clock that I can, you know, control from uh, and sync it up basically with my DAW. 
so everything will be in time on my DAW if I want to loop it or whatever. So that's what I'm going to do the now. But here, here's the sound of it, bit crushed. <laughs> So I'm going to figure out drums now and see what I can do. I'm not sure if I want to stay in the modular. If I do, I've got these drum modules here, which are from a guy called Uoki Toki. Uh, I can't pronounce the name, but he's a Russian guy who made these really cool DIY modules and they sound amazing. Uh, so I might throw in a kick drum or something from there, but um, I'll see. Because for more complicated drum patterns, I'll probably want to use something a bit more uh, complicated. Okay, so I've spent about half an hour um, modifying things and changing the patch, and I haven't got to the drums yet. Lots of things have happened, as you can uh, see from this spaghetti of cables. So the first thing I've done is tie both of the outputs of this, so both uh, chip outputs, to uh, an envelope coming in, or it's a gate but I'm using an envelope so that I can control the length of the sequence, or the length of each note. So if I turn up the length of this en envelope, So you can see as I turned in the envelope, the reason I wanted to do that was because whenever the sequence stopped, I was getting loads of noise and I thought it'd be cool to have the option of just playing shorter notes. The problem with that is that because I'm going through the bit crusher, I'm never going to get a totally quiet signal because you can hear. And of course that's still got a wee bit of the envelope in there, but it took forever to figure that out because the way these envelopes on this thing interact with external signals is not entirely clear. But that's the last time I'll moan about how confusing this is. I have a clock coming in to a sequential switch here. Um, that is the common input. And then I have two separate outputs coming out. And what they do is Basically, the sequential switch is cycling through every so often and it is changing the pattern by triggering a different sequence here. And the way I've got it to do that rhythmically is by um, using a much slower clock from this, my shuttle control, which is my main clock in this patch. And it's going into this 4MS uh, rotating clock divider. And so every however often it's dividing the clock down so that, you know, every two bars or something like that, it changes the pattern via the sequential switch. The thing to note is that I had to run the clock signal into this envelope generator first because the oscillographic block wasn't recognising the clock necessarily all the time. It must not have been a strong enough signal. So you can see I'm on one pattern down here just now, which is that one and then it should switch shortly. There we go. So if you listen, you can hear it cycling. Cool. It isn't perfect because, as you notice, it doesn't change right on the bar. Part of that is you can't reset the sequence on this back to the start, as far as I'm aware. So I don't have a good way to, um, oh wait, is that, a, is that a reset? Is that a reset? This could be a reset. If this is a reset, then it means what I can do is sync up the resets of all of these. So they all reset back to the same place. And every time I stop or start the sequence, it should in theory all go back to the same point or start from the same point. So that's my melody kind of set up. Not perfect, I would like it to be a wee bit slower division, but whatever. Next I'm going to think about drums, probably. Although I said this before and then it didn't happen, but I'm pretty sure it's going to happen this time. By way of exploration, what I have here now is I have a couple of drum modules. I've got a kick and a snare, or a hi-hat, whatever 
Twin, what you want, from um, being triggered via my rotating clock divider, and their the kick is going into one of my preamp uh, modules just to give it a bit of beef, so you can hear that. Uh, Sounds pretty meaty. Aye, and that's just going to give a simple beat. As I said, I'm probably going to add in different drums or like append drums on top of things when I've recorded it. But uh, for the sake of having some variation in the Euro drums, I'm using this sequential switch, this octopus sequential switch. And I have two different clocks that are um, being switched between these two. So you can see on the screen, for most of the time, it's just a straight clock. And then every so often, I've got what is a fill. So I'll play it and you'll hear what I mean. So you can see whenever it hits that, you get a nice wee, a nice wee drum fill, which is pretty good. Alrighty, I've done a few different things here that I'm going to explain and to go wee bit of patching. I have split the output of the VCO, so, so the oscillographic block, and I've sent it through, already it was going through the bit modifier, so the bit crusher, but I've also sent it now through this um, Verbtronics, uh, I think it's Pittsburgh, 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 whatever, Pittsburgh module, a reverb thing, it's a digital reverb, and that kind of balances out the harshness of the bit crusher. And I've also um, started pinging the filter with an envelope, so basically every so often there's a sweep, a filter sweep that's going through the main melody, which sounds quite nice. And as you saw, I've added some extra percussion in with a squid sound sample, um, just to give it a wee bit of variation. And it's beginning to sound pretty cool. <laughs> You can hear, you can hear how adding that reverb on top of this, so with the drive signal and the reverb going in as well as the bit crusher, it sounds amazing. So I've complicated things again here by adding in um, some variations on the melody because I didn't think that the melody, as cool as it was, it was kind of just repeating itself going over and over the um, the kind of upper and lower octave so I wanted to give a wee bit of variation and the way I've done that is by taking the trigger outputs from the sequential switch up here uh, which you can maybe see and I've run them into another switch which is a manual switch here uh, so basically for each uh, output from that sequential switch up there I now have a manually controlled switch so I've got two options for each rhythmical variation if that makes sense and maybe not explaining that very well but basically I have my rhythmical change so the sequential switch is changing every bar or every, not every bar, it must be every eight, whatever it is, is changing in time with the music between the two different sequences here. But in order to vary that, I have the manual switch so I can override or choose which sequence the sequential switch will actually route to. So they're in pairs of two. So I think I have these two, which you can't really see. Yeah, okay. Uh, those two are on one switch and those two are on another. And uh, maybe it'll make sense if I just play it. So at the moment, they're going between these two. You can't really see because of the cables, but 
but if I switch one of these manually... And now it goes to that one instead. And then back. And then if I switch the top one, it should go between these two, which are slight variations. Aye. It's clear as mud. So I've got my main melody patch. That's the point. Uh, I'm just going to let it run like that and manipulate it via the switches and jam along with some of the effects and stuff and then add the drums in with the MPC and that should be it. Some time has now passed and uh, I went and had dinner and I ran into some problems so I had to figure them out. Specifically my idea was that I was going to record a whole bunch of stuff on the Eurorack not worry about performing it live or anything, just get a bunch of different variations down that I could then chop up in loops. And in theory that should have been easy because I clocked my Eurorack directly from my DAW, so it was all at 84 BPM. But when I started to add drums in on my MPC, which is over here, uh, I, it wasn't working and the ends of the bars weren't lining up and it just didn't seem to sound right. So. I thought there maybe was a, a time signature issue or something, but I asked one of my drummers and said, can you <laughs> tell me like, what is wrong with this? Why doesn't it make sense? And he said, well, it sounds like there's a BPM issue. You're at the wrong BPM in your DAW. And at first that didn't, you know, that didn't make sense because I had clocked it directly to my DAW. So the BPM must be correct. But when I listened with the click on, the melody was totally off with the click. And the only thing I can really think that must be the cause for that is that the divisions I'm using on my clock divider must be weird. So I thought I had it on like, oh, I don't know, I won't be able to find it now, but I thought I had it on a division that would keep it, um, you know, square with the tempo, but it, it, I guess it hasn't. So the melody wasn't a proper division that I could just chop neatly with the BPM. Although, to be honest, the other question I have is about the this module in particular because the way it, it interacts with triggers and everything else is a bit strange, so I'm still wrapping my head around it. And there is a speed knob which changes the behaviour of triggers, so it could be that that's throwing things off. But whatever it is, I figured it out. Um, the BPM is something like 101 point eight or seven or something but I couldn't get it constant so I've gone through and I've chopped everything up as you can see I've chopped it up into nice little uh, sections so and it took a fucking fair amount of time but which is not what I wanted to do however it's done and now I'm going to layer up additional drums and hopefully that will give some variation that the Eurorack drums don't have because I've never been great at getting variation in Eurorack drums. So, MPC will give me some good drum sounds and then I'm going to layer on some additional synth sounds, uh, sequences and maybe play with a keyboard and um, that will be that. I think looking back at this, I kind of just recorded on a whim, um, but I think this is a good idea like showing how I create things but I need to probably think about it a wee bit better about how I present it because I mean it is I don't know maybe it, it is a hodgepodge and I don't really know what I'm doing so perhaps it's it's better I display it this way but also I don't know I don't know there must be a better way anyway MPC I'm gonna use the MPC now and see how it goes <laughs> So it's getting late now, some drinks have been consumed, uh, but uh, it's turned out pretty good actually. I've chopped everything up, 
recorded a bunch of beats. I got my wife to do some beats as well and I've put everything together and I'm fairly happy with the result. Uh, in the past I've had kind of issues with a, a silligraphic block and I don't know whether it was just me at the time or whether there are were serious you know bugs or whatever but I'm getting on with it way better than I did back then uh, when I first bought it and I think to be fair when I first got it I, I didn't really understand as much about synthesis and the way that Eurorack worked as I do now not saying that I understand anything at this point but I kind of understand more signal flow and everything so it, it works better but it's still a fucking weird quirky module and I had to like cajole it a lot to get it to work in a way I wanted it to but I really like the end result and I think it could be some of the, the my favourite music I've made in ages uh, not including band stuff but in terms of electronic stuff I really like what I've come up with and so I'm going to uh, just play it now I think I don't know what kind of visuals I'm going to do because I'm not playing it live but uh, I'll just play it now for you and uh, there you go um, I don't really know whether this video even if I'm going to put it together because it seems like a big rambling mess of shite uh, but on the other hand I did spend literally just all day taking a few hours in between things to put this together and I think it shows kind of a rough general idea of my haphazard process of making music with uh, the modular at least and how I put things together and how things come together in the end maybe um, but I, if I do this again I'll probably try and think about it a bit more before I put it up so that's it that is here's the song oh yeah I, what I was going to say was that I'm probably not going to add any additional elements at this point because I quite like it as it is and uh, I don't want to I've got a tendency to overburden tracks with lots and lots of elements that don't need to be there so I'm going to just leave it as it is and kind of tweak the the composition a bit and maybe if I ever put it out I'll change some things but just for now I think it sounds pretty cool. Aye, there we go, done.